Hello and welcome to Gospel and Grand Music, creative unifiers that support students of colour. Thank you for inviting me to speak at the 27th Gospel Celebration Concerts. I'm Dr Monique Charles and I am a cultural sociologist. My area of interest is music and sound, particularly black music, black British music. And with sound, I'm interested in the metaphysical, spirituality and wellness, as I'm also a sound therapist. I'm a methodologist and a theorist, and I'll be talking to you about my research method, musicological discourse analysis, in this paper as we begin to explore the creativity in music and its ability to unify and motivate people. So, in my paper, Musicological Discourse Analysis, this is what I say music is. So, after interviewing people, listening to songs, and seeing how they react and respond to music, particularly grind music, was the focus here, I began to see that music is a variety of things. So yes, sounds, you can talk about the qualities of sounds, maybe the intensity of vibration, so loudness, or the timbre, the sound quality, for example, whether the sound is linear, non-linear, etc. But realistically, how people organise these sounds and prioritise these sounds across time and space is what makes sound become music. So music is social as well as sound and the way that people incorporate or build or create music is influenced by ancestry, by their location, by what they believe is important, so what is uh, expressed lyrically if a song or a genre have lyrics. What technology they use affects the quality of the sound, how they can organise things through time. And technology is in the Greek sense, mastery of skills, not all digital, for example. But anyway, so musicological discourse analysis, I argue, gives an in-depth analysis into the social and the cultural, as well as the sonics when it comes to analysing music. And I argue that doing this, reveals a sonic footprint timestamp which is much more specific than genre because genre can often be an empty signifier. Sonic footprint timestamp takes into consideration a vast variety of things and can provide a thick description about something at a given point in time. It demonstrates that the music being made is an articulation of existence for a group of people and a sonic footprint timestamp can only happen through collective co-creation consumption and distribution. So, I already believe that music does things for people. So, I'm going to talk about grime in this particular talk, as well as UK Garage. And the reason why I'm talking about these two genres is because I am at the Gospel Celebration concert, so I am going to assume that all of the attendees here, or at least most of them, have a familiarity with the cultural um, the sonic uh, musical conventions of gospel music. So I need to focus on grime and UK garage to give you a context so you have something to compare it to. So I'm going to introduce grime. I'm going to make connections between UK garage, which predates grime, and the Baptist church. And then when I talk about grime, particularly contemporary grime in the last five years, I'm going to make connections between the Pentecostal and charismatic churches and grime. And from there, I can talk about how it supports young people. And whilst the title of this particular talk talks about students of colour and they are included, I have broadened it to include young people. And that is because the nuances between Black Britishness and African Americanness, they actually do exist. So, of course, when it comes to blackness, we find we are all globally affected by race, by class and the oppressive forces that are enacted in these situations, but there is nuance between these two countries. So when I think about Black Britishness, for example, it is a relatively new identity. It's less than 100 years old. So Britain colonised the world, well, at least about a third of it. And so um, after the Second World War, when it needed to be rebuilt, it called in people from the colonies. So this is where you find significant amounts of black people living in the UK. So this is after the Second World War. So this is how this new identity of black Britishness was formed in a more concrete way. 
So when we think about black people in Britain that have come from the colonies, it also tells us that blackness in Britain is not monolithic. We have people from Caribbean islands, different Caribbean islands with their own cultures. We have people from various parts of Africa with their own cultures. And in some cases, South America, or maybe Central America as well. And they all have their own cultural, ethnic differences. So let me move on to grime. So grime is a genre of underground music, or at least it was when it first came out, coming from rough council estates of inner city London. So council estates are the equivalent of social housing. It emerged in the early noughties, so the early 2000s. It's a DIY genre, so people were making music on their phones, on their playstations, using cheap software and pirated software. The spaces that Grime was created and grew included being on road, so that's in the streets, nightclubs, youth centres, record shops, and pirate radio was very important. Pirate radio is effectively illegal radio because in the UK you need a license to run an AM or FM radio station. play a little bit of grime for you to have a listen to that is the sound of early grime early grime in the early noughties it's a male dominated genre doesn't sound much like gospel does it really but anyway famous artists include people like dizzy rascal you may have heard of him or skepta he's from boy better know and drake canadian rapper works closely with the boy better know collective stormzy may be another one you've heard of there are some women in the scene too, although many of their MCs don't necessarily call themselves grime MCs. So, how does it unify? Where is the gospel in all of this? So it's important to look at a parent of grime. So one of the musical parents, as it were, of grime is UK Garage. So the cultural practices from UK Garage began to in, well, were infused into grime primarily because UK Garage came first, especially in the nightclub scenes, nightclub communities, and grime gained traction in those same spaces. So, um, UK Garage is an electronic music form, so EDM, electronic dance music, which is actually American music, um, and its closest family members are US Garage and House. Now, academic O'Hagan looked at UK Garage and he found that there were strong, there was a strong relationship between the music styles and religious practices within the Baptist Church in the US and the musical structure and delivery between MC and audience members in UK Garage nightclubs. He also made it obvious or made it explicit that many uh, m people making music in the American churches, but also making music outside, including places like House. House incorporates lots of organs, keyboards, melodic type of music. And UK Garage was very similar to begin with, and it emerged in the 1990s. And one of the features in terms of cultural practice that came to be was, it was associated with nightclubs. So people would be going out Saturday nights clubbing, once the nightclubs closed, people still wanted to party. So Sunday, Sunday in the early hours of the morning, well into the afternoon, people found other places to go. So they would go um, raving or clubbing Saturday night, well into Sunday. These are obviously young people. Some people wouldn't go out on a Saturday night. They would go out on a Sunday morning, particularly to these nightclubs. So it became known as Sunday service. People would get up, put on their Sunday best to go to these UK garage events. So some, the idea of going somewhere, putting on your Sunday best, 
to hear words of affirmation and feel great have parallels with going to church. It's important to note that the people that attended were young people, but London in particular, where a lot of this began, is multiracial, multicultural, multi-religious. So people of all backgrounds would be going to these spaces. So that was basically the bed in which grime came from. But if we go back to MDA and we think about the importance of ancestry and cultural heritage and how that also informs your sonic palette and can inform your music making, we need to look at the demographics of the black people in London in the 2000s. So the black people in the 2000s were predominantly of Jamaican ancestry. And so taking UK garage, which was connected to US garage, they stripped away the harmonics and the melody, um, the melody, the melodic components from the keyboards and the organs, and even the gospel-like soulful vocals were removed, and they prioritised sounds that made sonic sense to them. So they incorporated more bass, they incorporated more space to enable a uh, MC or a DJ to rap or toast over a rhythm track. They also played with the syncopation to give a, 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 a skippy beat. So this is how the sound began to progress towards the grime sound. Also in the 2000s, even though the Jamaican uh, descendants in Britain were the largest population, we started to have an increase in number of West Africans coming to Britain, migrating to Britain, particularly Nigerians. And one thing that happened from the 1980s, Nigerians started to come in increasing number charismatic and Pentecostal churches started to grow exponentially in inner cities where these West Africans were building their new lives. So we find that as people migrate, they bring their theistic beliefs with them. And so this is just something to bear in mind, the kind of changing demographics in the 2000s. But if you fast forward now, if grime started in the noughties, we're now in 2022, so grime is approximately 20 years old. So those people who initially were listening to grime, early grime in the 2000s, or children that grew up with grime in the early 2000s are now adults. Some of these children are going to be born in Britain, some born outside and migrating over, particularly from uh, regions in West Africa, and others may have a migrant parent, so be adopting the practice of going to these uh, Pentecostal charismatic churches that West Africans were building in large numbers that also attracted migrants. So if we look at these particular album covers, these are album covers for two grime MCs or two grime artists, and they are commercial albums. They are not gospel albums. So we see Gets here, head bowed, holding a rosary, hands clasped in prayer. This album is called Ghetto Gospel, The New Testament. Tupac was his favorite rapper, hence Ghetto Gospel. We can see he's holding a rosary. Now a rosary is Catholic, but it still falls within the Judeo-Christological Judeo religious belief framework. We see Stormzy here, reenacting a very black Da Vinci's Last Supper as his album cover. So these are the covers. Stormzy's album, Gang Signs and Prayer. So there's clear links here. Theistic belief is being shown. So when we look at Getz, Getz's album, he overtly praises God in accordance to traditional understandings of the gospel. He says he's protected by God. He also quotes scriptures. He talks about his spiritual battles and how he's navigated them. Importantly, he talks about everyday life that his listeners experience, whether it is institutional racism, illness, murder, mental health. He clearly states that belief in God is the most important, no matter the religion, even though he himself is a Christian. And this could partly be because he will have friends who have different religious backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds because of the diversity and multicultural nature of London. He is a Londoner. 
Sonically, he brings back in the vocals, the soulful vocals. He brings in church bells. He challenges his listeners to look at their morals, to look within, to consider their theistic beliefs. Stormzy, in his album, songs express gratitude to God. He claims to be God's son. He also talks about biblical scripture. He talks about overcoming the odds of life on road to become a successful musician and he gives that credit to God. He hopes that other people on road where he once was will turn to God like he has. But again, this is not the main and only focus of the album. He talks about everyday things. He talks about the mundane. He talks about, you know, peers that he may have see as rivals or foes. He shares his theistic belief. He might talk about relationships. He, in his particular album, he takes the time to talk about a variety of things that connect to his listeners. Sonically, he has songs that incorporate a more gospel aesthetic, bringing in vocals and allowing space for listeners to begin to sing along in chorus to praise and come before and prostrate before God. So significantly, for both Stormzy and Getz, who have had experience of going to Pentecostal and charismatic churches since the noughties, they profess their faith in a traditional sense that aligns with gospel music, but they're also talking about day-to-day -day lived realities. They're not compromising their theistic beliefs and their albums reach beyond the church and Christian communities. So like Baptist, Pentecostal charismatic preachers and pastors and religious leaders, their album does include explicit references to religious symbolism or just to religion and the theism. But it also talks to thing, uh, about things that resonate with their listeners, political issues, cultural issues, social issues. It includes things that are profane, sexual desire, profanity talks about angst, mental health, emotional states, masculinity. So they challenge their peers, their listeners, to explore their own lived realities and share their vulnerabilities, consider their theistic beliefs. And in doing so, they provide a space for their listeners to reflect and to discuss amongst peers, to unify amongst peers, to feel visible and to feel seen in themselves, in the artist, in others and provides room for potential action and this is important because many of the listeners are going to be from marginalized and downtrodden groups and so engaging in this space can be a real source of unification and empowerment for those people who are actually downtrodden and it can give them the strength to keep going in their own daily lives thank you